just retired from the military on the first of uh, first of March. Out of 23 years, I'm actually mm -hmm. from the South Side, so you know, don't don't beat me up too bad. But born and raised on the South Side. Um, I joined the military in 1999. I've been gone ever since. I three tours. Went overseas. I lived in Europe for just about eight years. And in the military, I was a truck driver and I was a uh, human resource. I really didn't do a lot of things. I did stuff, secret sort service, all of that stuff, you know, right? But um, a friend introduced me to insurance about uh, in 2019. I was just sitting at home and I didn't know what I wanted to do, right? When I get out, when I grow up and come back in the community, because I came back home, and I realized either my friends were either gone or things didn't change. And then plus myself, I've evolved as a person too, right? So a friend introduced me to it and I kind of fell in love with it. But one of the things that happened with me was um, I had a son, uh, Cameron, my youngest son. And he had um, Guillain-Barre syndrome, uh, which it's something, it's like an attack on your blood cells, your white blood cells, and he was paralyzed. And uh, in the military, they kind of, they pay, they pay the bills, right? But they don't take care of the bills when you get home. So, you know, I was married at the time. The, the ex, the former wife at the time, she had to stay home. And my, no daycare would take my son, nothing like that. And I didn't know what to do. So when I got into insurance, then I learned about something called living benefits. And basically that's something that could have helped me at the time financially and also him because, you know, he's 10 years old right now. This happened when he was a year and a half. And he's good now. He looked like a normal kid, but he don't have the strength. He don't have all of those things. He had two shots to his spinal cord. It was $50,000 per mm -hmm. shot. So the military paid the bulk of the bill, but you know, I had to go out and do what I do from Chicago and hustle a little bit to do what I need to do to take care of me, right? So with that, now my goal is to tell people about what insurance could do. It ain't about dying. It is, but it's bigger than that, right? It's bigger than, uh, 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 like, I want to retire three times, right? I got one retirement, but now I figured out, like, Okay, I wish somebody would have told me if I put my money into insurance policy the right way, then I could retire again, right? And then whatever other benefits come to me. So that's the biggest things I want to get out to everybody um, and tell them about it. I'm licensed in just about 22 states. I got a chance to partner with um, Ms. Antoinette Rogers, which is also family. And we reconnected uh, just about three years ago. We never met before, mm -hmm. right? So that was a blessing. And I said, hey, why don't we come work together? So whatever, you know, that's what family do. We come together, we help each other. So uh, a lot of individuals that can't get insurance, that maybe high blood pressure, diabetes, um, whatever, you name it, I can help you. Oh, I'm gonna find a solution, right? So I had a solution. Um, so just about that, the only thing we got to do is make sure that people get the information. That's the biggest thing. So with that, thanks, uh, Antoinette. We stood up the, the uh, business mixer, which is something that's growing, where we want to bring people, bring the community closer. We got creative Scott here, right? And all of you that's here, and this is just going to continue to grow and do a lot of good things. So that's what we want to do is kind of unite everybody. Not just on the west side, south side, east side. Well, we take care of little small steps and then bring everybody together. So that's my piece. All right, I just want to share that. Hi everyone, thanks so much for coming out. My name is Antoinette Rogers. I'm the host here of Country Financial. We do auto, home, life, and business insurance as well as retirement planning. Um, thanks so much for coming. We host a monthly networking meeting every third Friday of the month. So um, this is something new. This is our second time. So thanks so much for coming out. We have a special guest presenter today. Um, so that's why you guys see all the cameras and nice presentation set up. So we have some great information today for you guys. Um, another upcoming event I'm having is Monday. We're doing a back to school um, ice cream social. So if you have kids or um, that's going to be starting school. I know some kids started this week, 
Um, but we will be giving out ice cream. So after school, feel free to stop in and get your kids some ice cream. It's going to be here. We're going to have some uh, school supplies too that day, just you know, to give out. We like to do things in the community. Um, I also want to thank uh, Creative Scott. Um, he's uh, He's one of my favorite people <laughs> in the North Lawndale area. He's yeah. been here a lot longer than me. He does a lot in the community yeah. as well uh, with public safety. Yeah. Did you want to say something? Now I know you're eating. You can always come up later. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, but other than that, we have food, um, drinks. We're going to go ahead and get started. And I just want to introduce our guest speaker today. Uh. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are. Uh, I'm, I'm Carlos Robles Shanahan. This is my brother Rafael Robles. Um, we are both the founders and directors of, of Duo Development. Uh, so we're here to share a little bit about like who we are, what we do, our past development in, in North London. But mainly, really, like, want to invite you to um, in, to um, invest in this building that we're going to be talking about. Uh, it's a pretty new way of doing things as far as real estate development that um, we'll get into the details but we long story short is that we had the opportunity to build a building and um, before we do that we want to make sure that that building is also owned in part by people from the neighborhood right so that if the building makes any money that you're able to get some of that money back uh, because of that initial investment so that's what we're going to be sharing uh, about today and really excited that you're here so we're gonna get get started. So first we'll, we'll talk about the building, about what, what it is, um, and then we'll get into how you can invest and be, you know, join us in this. Yeah, uh, I know this doesn't amplify my voice, so I'm gonna be loud, uh, but let me know if you can't hear me. Um, so the building's on 16th and Sawyer, on the, the intersection of 16th and Sawyer on the southwest uh, corner lot. It's an empty lot. All those four lots are empty right now. Um, Carlos and I had the opportunity to start working in North Lawndale back in 2019, uh, 2018 actually with the Quality of Life Plan. I don't know if y'all remember, there was a lot of meetings happening. Um, there was a big meeting at the, uh, at the cinema that now is closed. Um, but at the time, there were a lot of organizations in the city and state trying to figure out sort of like um, what residents of North Lawndale wanted on 16th Street. Uh, we met Creative at that time and we talked to a lot of the business owners and residents of and around 16th Street. And one of the big things that people surfaced was that, you know, 16th Street, as you know, used to be a big commercial corridor that over time, you know, um, yeah, the riots, things like that, uh, other policies that were put in place by the city, like all that disinvestment caused 16th Street to be what it is today. But it used to be thriving. Um, and so, we saw this lot that was on sale on 16th Street. It's close to the very east side to, Gar to uh, Douglas Park. And we felt like it was a good opportunity to do good on the vision that a lot of the residents and business owners of 16th Street had, had shared, that they wanted it to sort of be back to be a commercial corridor. This lot used to be a, a few sort of smaller businesses. There was a laundromat, there was a corner store. Uh, and to the extent of our knowledge, a car hit the building and then the owner of the building didn't want to repair it and so they tore it down. And so those businesses were gone, um, you know, that building structure was gone and it's an empty lot, right? And so now what we want to do is bring that lot, you know, back to life. And the way that we're doing it is in small steps. So the building that we're planning on building is what you see images for on the posters. Uh, this building we're calling Starling. If you're not familiar with Starlings, why the name? Starlings are birds that make these really beautiful, what they call murmurations. They're like big shapes that look kind of like aliens. They fly together. But the nice thing about these birds is that they have no leader. They're a leaderless pack and they follow their seven closest neighbors to do these you know, beautiful shapes. And so we felt that um, because we wanted to do this in a very resident-oriented way, the name was uh, appropriate. So Starling is going to be a commercial building. We want it to be a neighborhood amenity where um, full time there will be a coffee service run by Monday Coffee Company. Monday Coffee Company is a black owned business that has um, as its mission to decolonize coffee. So uh, a lot of you, it's like unfortunate fun facts all over the place, but coffee is one of the main reasons why European colonizers came to the Americas. And so uh, Monday Coffee Company responding to that wants to sort of decolonize it, take ownership of it, and then share really interesting drinks with everybody. They're really good. 
Um, if you've been to the Garfield Conservatory, they've done a pop-up there, they've done a pop-up in Soho House, different places, they're, they're really good. So they will be leasing the cafe component of the space, but the rest of the building, there will be a library, there will be a working area kind of workshop for everybody, there will be a sound booth, um, and there will be a small office. And so we're hoping, and as you can see, there's a lot of terraces and there's an outdoor garden too. Uh, the garden is not going to be a fruit garden, it's going to be sort of like a, um, in part, sort of like a play space for ch children, but to, to hang out, you know. Um, so one of the ways in which we're thinking of activating this space, a lot of the residents in Orlando, entrepreneurs, uh, have said that there's not um, a lot of interest in signing on to a three-year lease or a five-year lease. You know, somebody starting a new business is kind of wants to test the waters before they, they commit to a full establishment. And so what we're going to do with all the spaces, the library, the working area, the sound booth, the outdoor spaces, is rent them by the hour. So we do like a, we're going to do a flexible model for rent so that if somebody wants to provide a service on a weekend or as part of the week, they can, they can lease the space for that short period of time but not be committed to like a three-year lease or anything like that. So a um, pop-up. Like pop kind of like a pop-up, yeah. yeah. Very similar to a pop-up. Yeah. Um, and so... Pop-up. Oh, yeah. but were you going to make it affordable for people in the neighborhood that mm -hmm. want to do something? Yeah, yeah. Are you all familiar with like Airbnb? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's there's a online platform similar to Airbnb, but it's called Peerspace, and there's a few other ones. But it's basically instead of renting houses, you're renting commercial spaces. It started because a lot of photographers mm -hmm. wanted to rent like pool spots to take photos, videos. And so that's how they started, but now it's sort of for everybody, right? If you're a part of an organization that wants to hold a meeting and you might not have the space for it, you can rent there. If you want to host a baby shower, if you want to host a birthday party, you know, wedding reception, you can, you can rent the space. And so we're going to have kind of like flexible ways for this space to be rented affordably. Um, and so we're making sure that from those platforms, this will be the, the most affordable in the city. Okay, so... What about people that live around in the community? Would they get a, a better discount? That's a great question. So, short yes. answer, yes and no. <laughs> kind of. Yes. 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 Uh, yes. 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 And. Uh, so yes, the people that live around the building will get a discount. So part of what we're doing, yeah, if you're, is anybody very familiar with real estate development, like building buildings, kind of? Kind of. Kind of, okay. So building buildings can be very mysterious, right? You're just kind of going about your day and all of a sudden there's a new building in your neighborhood that pops up. Right. And everybody's like, who did that? The probably the city was involved. Some other people were involved. You see logos of banks and logos of developers and corporations. Um, and so part of what we want to do since 2019 is we started putting together a real estate development class just to teach people how real estate development works, demystify it, show you that it's not that difficult, but nobody teaches you, right? So that's difficult. Everything's hard if nobody teaches you. And so part of what we want to do with this building is set a new example for how developers could practice real estate development in a more ethical, more community-oriented way. Yes, sir? Uh, what stage uh, are y'all in right now? Yeah. Um, so right now, we have just finished working with the architects on the design of the building. Basically, we have what they call permit-ready drawings. So the permit-ready drawings is the drawings of the building. They're going to go to the city to get the construction permits. And then we expect to break ground early in the year. We probably won't break ground this year because of the winter, but it depends. We could. It's just a matter of like literally the ground not freezing. Mm -hmm. if, that, if we can beat that clock, then we'll break ground this year. If not, we will break ground as soon as the ground, you know, is soft enough to us out. To us out. Um, and so, oh yeah, for the discount. So, so part of what we want to do here is offer, um, so, you know, it's like you heard a lot in, in development, right, like community involvement, community input, and all those things. Those are great things, and we want to do that. But we felt that we could go further than that and offer community ownership, actual dollar ownership. And so what we want to do with this project is open the opportunity for investment for any person, especially the people that live in the neighborhood, so that you are a financial equity owner of the, of the building, okay? So what that means is that every building leases its space, right? And so at the end of the year, there's usually profits or, the, or there's losses. So if a lot of people lease the space, there's going to be a profit. If, not, if nobody leases the space, 
there's going to be losses, right? But if you're an owner, if there is a profit, part of that profit will be distributed to you as an owner of the building. So for the people that invest, it's a very long-winded answer to the question, uh, the people that invest, we want to give them special rates to okay. use the building at the, for the rental, discounted rates for the rental. Um, everything in real estate development is a decision. So there is nothing to say that um, if a lot of people who live right around that built that lot, that building, mm -hmm. um, they use it a lot, we can give them discounts too on the rental rates. So what will be the demographics of the people that live around there? I mean, so well, one one thing before I answer that question, the the exciting part of the who can be an owner is the you can start you can own a share of the building, so to speak, for a hundred dollars, starting at a hundred dollars. And the other exciting part is that uh, for the first 50, th we're trying to raise 100,000 from neighbors, but for the first 50,000, uh, the Chicago Community Trust is uh, matching dollar for dollar those first uh, 50,000 for people that live in North London. So if you put in $100, that means that you immediately are doubling your, your investment. So. And when the stock split, I also double my money effigy. So if, if, if things go well and make money, yeah. So we, we have a, that's actually getting into the, the details of like the, the investment, but so we can, we can talk about what we're expecting there. Do you have questions on the building? Yeah, any questions about the building and what it's going to do, how it runs? Yeah. How much is the building going to cost? The total, total, the total, total, amount. total development. And what's the time limit on uh, the return of the building? <coughs> we got to be able to try to build it up and running. So the total development cost uh, is going to be about 1.2 million. Uh, we have gotten about six hundred thousand dollars in like committed as grants from the city. So we're looking at about to get a loan for about the other six hundred thousand. So that's that's again if we start construction, uh, depending on when we start construction, it's either this fall or like in the spring, right? Depending on the weather and the bank. Um, but then it's going to take about four to eight, four to six months to build the building because again it's pretty small and the inside doesn't have too many structures. It's open floor. That's also by design so that it could get built quick. Mm -hmm. So then it would be up and running for another year, and then that's when you would see your first uh, return. So if everything, let's call it, goes slow, you would get your first check would be on 2025. Summer of 2025-ish. Yeah. Things go fast, you might see it at the end of 2024 or early 2025. So you'll, you'll start seeing some returns at that point. So that's one, that's a really, really good question because you, we are asking for you to put in an investment of at least $100 now so that we can kind of move the project forward, but then you wouldn't see your first return until about two years from now, basically. And then every year you would see that um, you would you would see that return. So when we oh go ahead. Um, so just so so the six hundred thousand grants that you get from the city can't be used until the six hundred thousand dollars is used from you guys first. So it's more so like a reimbursement. The grants that the city give are always reimbursements to what you spend. Yeah. yeah so the 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 loan that we're getting is like they're calling a bridge loan. So they know that they're gonna like lend us the money, and then we are gonna basically draw from that loan and then like pay back the city. So we the loan still will be about six hundred thousand. So like knowing that the grants are <laughs> are there. So the NOF now is gonna go on an escrow account, not just reimbursable, but then the other one we got the equitable transit oriented that one is reimbursable um, so that one's gonna be a bit of like a dance with the bank and the, the grants but reimbursable means that you have to spend the money first and then they give you the money back so it's, they want to make sure that yeah the city just the city just doesn't get money they want to make sure right. that your project is funded and you can support the project yeah. so they give you a they give you the grant in, in good faith that you're gonna actually go through with your project. Right. Right. Yeah, so that's that's part of um, what, we're, what we're gonna be doing. So uh, more on the on the return on the investment, and it's first basically, we ask for uh, at least $100 minimum investment. You can invest as much as you want. Um, for the total. The, 
of you know of the hundred thousand dollars that there are to share, um, there you can you can buy more than a hundred dollars, of course. Um, if you live around, well, if you live in Orlando, you're getting that dollar that dollar amount matched. If you're looking for a match, we we are only matching up to five thousand dollars because you know we don't want to like just match one person. Uh, and then we are targeting a ten percent return on that initial investment. So. If you put in, let's say, $1,000, you give us your $1,000, and then it's basically going to be locked in for five years. That's what we're asking for. And then our expectation is to double your money in those five years. So eat, how that's going to happen is basically you do the initial 1000 today, then when the building starts operating, you, in that case, you would get $100 a year, and then another $100 a year after for five years, so $500. And then at year five, we would say, do you want to remain getting those that 10% return each year, or would you like to basically cash out? If you choose to cash out, then we would give you another like 500 to kind of make you whole to double that 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 amount. So if you started with a thousand, then at year five you would get two thousand um, dollars, and that's kind of the part of the the investment. That's in in five years we're doubling it, and that's um, that's pretty typical. And we are, well, yeah, any, that's it. Any questions about that? I, I like to just... And you got a bonded and insured? What's that? Bonded. Bonded and insured? Yeah. We'll, we'll have all the, the proper insurances yeah. that, that needs to happen. Yeah, then part of it is like the requirements from the city. That everybody's got to be insured, bonded, and all good. Yeah. Uh, I would say like... Just in terms of, obviously, every investment involves a level of risk, <coughs> so we always tell people you should not invest the money that you need to live day to day. If you have money available on top of that, that you feel like you could put away, then you should, you know, it's wise to invest that money in something, right? It doesn't have to be this, um, but that's the type of money that you want to consider making investments. Um, and that's just a general rule for anybody looking to invest in anything. It could be the stock market, it could be a friend's business, it could be a building. Um, yeah, generally we just, again, uh, the worst that can happen, so the types of um, the types of shares that you will own are non-voting and also non-responsibility. So that means that you are not responsible if the roof leaks, you will not get asked for more money, you are not that type of owner. The only people responsible for those types of fixes are us, right? The development team. Um, and, and the so, loans. And the loans is just the development team. The worst that can happen in terms of your investment is that you lose the initial amount that you invested. That's, that's true for any investment, whether it's a stock market, a building, or a business. Yeah, I'm sure. So you can see what it's supposed to look like? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we're going to give you all uh, a flyer at the end so you can have that to like, look at um, at home. Yeah. Who's your builder? Our builder is called VMR um, Construction. They're a builder that is um, coming up. They've been doing more like new construction. They started doing a lot of remod um, like remodeling projects. VMR is like the R is remodeling, but now they don't do remodeling, so they're just calling themselves VMR. Um, and they will be, they will be the ones building the building. So I just want to make sure, yeah. uh, for open conversation, that we make sure that the people that live in the community and the surrounding area, mm -hmm. so it would be great, the guys that hang right there on Holman, that they are participatory with building the building. Because then, yeah. even if they can't afford to buy into your, um, the investment yeah. opportunity, but when you have people to be, from the community helping, it gives them a vested interest and it protects what we are trying to do in the community. Yeah. So that's important for me, yeah. that you make sure that, and if that's something like that I can be added on for the hiring process, yeah. but we have to make sure that we hire yeah. from yeah. right there. Yeah, that we agree. We are, yeah, BMR is the general contractor, so we'll definitely, like, we have already told them, like, for his subcontracts to be looking for people around the neighborhood. So one of the things that we actually need help with, too, partly that, is, um, you know, like the development, like running a business like any business, right? Like you're doing kind of like, you're putting the pieces of the puzzle together, but we will leave you with our contact information so that if you do know somebody or an organization that can help to 
you know, help us find the right people in the neighborhood to apply for jobs or do the work here. North Line Dell Employment Network. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, perfect. We'll work with them. Right on home. Um, yeah. 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 Another thing. I guess the building right there. Yeah. The complete yeah. version. Mm -hmm. um, how many jobs would probably be available for the community also? And how many storefronts? You say you all people from the community, not the community, but whoever want to yeah. rent a storefront. How many storefronts would be available and would, would it be affordable? Yeah, so the there will be only one sort of like traditional tenant, which is the cafe business. Okay. Uh, Monday Coffee, I think they've said they're going to staff around three or four people. Okay. Uh, um, from the neighborhood. From the looking. neighborhood. And then the rest of the space, we're still looking to see, because this flexible rental model, to be honest, we don't know how many people it might take to staff. We expect at least one person that is there at the building maybe like every day or a big part of the week. And then maybe another person that is more in charge of like helping to organize events for the people that lease the, the storefront space. Um, so the storefront space, there's going to be one, two, so two sort of like indoor areas. I guess like three versions of the indoor. You could rent like either of the two halves or the whole indoor for an event for as many hours as you want. There will be a sound booth that will be available for rent by the hour. Uh, and then the outdoor spaces, you see there's like three little kind of like outdoor plazas. Those will be available for rent too. Um, and we don't know the final amount for the rent, but we're making sure that those spaces, again, comparing it to those sites like Pure Space, is the most affordable in the city. So you're going to have like, part of, part, of, part of the reason why that's nice is that it's going to be a brand new building with really affordable kind of hourly rates to rent. And so part of it too will be kind of like, editing as we go. Like if a lot of the uh, neighbors, neighborhood entrepreneurs say like, hey, I would rent this, but it's a little too expensive, then we're gonna modify those rates. Um, and again, the people that invest will get the even further discounted rates. It doesn't matter how much money you invest. If it's $100, as long as you're part owner, you'll for sure get discounted rates. And then um, from there, we're gonna see how many people like sort of surrounding and how far, you know, if they wanna rent it for something like baby showers, Weddings, those are some of the things that we've heard from the neighbors that they want space for, that they currently don't really have a place indoors to go to, to rent, necessarily. Um, you know, we'll make sure it's available. Um, there are a lot of nonprofits in the room and nonprofits in this area in the city, right? Yep. Is there something that could be dedicated for, within the building, say, hey, this is the one, you know, we had an investment to for allow people to get in. But it, could it be considered for some portion of that building to be for nonprofits to help them get off the ground too? Um, yeah. Has that been considered? Yeah. I mean, when we say like entrepreneurs, we include the nonprofits in that. So there's a lot of nonprofits actually that are run in the city, not just North London, but that are run by small teams. It's like one person, two people, maybe teams of five. Um, so they definitely will be one of the sort of like audiences for providing kind of these rental rates. And what we really want to see, so we've heard a lot from neighbors um, in the spirit of there being a lot of nonprofits. There's there's a lot of nonprofits, but sometimes there's not a lot of space to just go and hang out and just bring a friend and have a coffee and have a conversation. So most of what we want this building to be with the cafe component of the garden is you can just come hang out, you know, walk there in the mornings, get a coffee or not get a coffee, just sit down, do some homework, we're right next to a high school your teacher, you know, everybody to just kind of have that as a space available. We're going to have it open during extended hours, so probably close at like 9 or 10 every night, so that especially youth, elders, you know, seniors, teachers, whoever can come kind of like after work and just hang out. Um, and so, yeah, so the nonprofits, part of, part of what we're really hoping is that the more that it's used, every time you go, there's going to be something new happening there. So instead of it being kind of more traditional, like four stores that are always the same. We're hoping that different types of organizations, different entrepreneurs rent the spaces different days. And so when you go, there's like one day there's somebody selling merch, another day somebody's selling food, another day somebody's running legal services, so, you know. Excuse me, so yeah. this kind of like an incubator or something? It's, yeah, kind of, oh, like, okay. it's kind of like an incubator, different from an incubator because incubators have those businesses there all the time. Mm -hmm. So I guess I should say it's not an incubator, uh, but it's a space, it's 
it's definitely a, di a new model, so bear with us, um, because it's kind of like an incubator. If you come up with a fun word for it, we'll call it that. Um, but there will the the only business that will be there every time you go there is Monday Coffee Company, okay. and they will run the cafe. And we just did that intentionally because we want to make sure that when you go, something is always there. It's not just like an empty building. Uh, but the rest of the spaces, you know, <laughs> there might be nothing going on, in which case you can just sit down, read a book, blah blah blah. Uh, or there might be programming again from a nonprofit, a financial literacy class, a you know, chess night, board game night, you know, all, all these kinds of things. Um, we're gonna make sure the furniture in there is movable and, and accessible and all that stuff. Good questions. Yeah. Any other Good questions? Ideas? All right. So what I will say is um, that. The process of designing and building the building mm -hmm. is the most kind of like rigid at this stage. So we have permit ready drawings, so those will go to the city, we'll get our construction permits, and then they will give us permission to build that building, right? Um, the piece around like what kind of events should happen in there, how much the rental rate is, kind of we call that the experience of the building, that is very flexible. So we're, again, we're going to leave you with our contact information, and if you have ideas, or things that you're like, I will never go to that cafe if it doesn't offer this, we will take all of those ideas. Because um, we, again, we've been working in North Londo since 2019. So part of working with the community is to make the space something that you would actually enjoy going to, not just like a foreign star Starbucks that you, just shows up, you know. Um, and so the more that you use it, the more excited that you are, the more useful that it is to you the better it is for everybody. And again, extending the opportunity, if you choose to invest, if you're able to invest, then the more that it's used, the more profit that the neighbors will receive. Um, and then finally, to echo uh, Elder Woman Monique, if you are not able to invest, but are interested in getting involved in some capacity, please let us know, because we can't read your mind. If you have a hard skill, if you're really good with wood construction, plumbing, if you're good with people, like there might be opportunities for us to hire you to work with us as part of the process of building the building in the next you know, year and a half. So, um, and that could be you, that could be someone you know. We really want to work with you too, so if you know somebody who's younger, um, who's interested, let us know. Cedric? Um, are you going to have like a, you probably answer it just in my head, um, kind of like a sign up list of individuals that come in and the biggest thing that I've, I've learned in the last seven days is uh, individuals that have businesses in this area to make sure that there's money, individuals that invest but come in and rent a portion of that, that there can be individuals that can, the money is here in the neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. So is there kind of like a sign up to ensure that that's, that's a priority because it's nobody, People may not say it, but I'm going to just put it out there yeah. to make sure the money's here. So I, I live in Elgin, right? And I yeah. drive here my whole entire family. Yeah. So if I come from Elgin and say, hey, I'm going to do this and then go back home, okay. you know, that's the biggest thing. So will it be a priority to have individuals from the area first to make sure that the money's here? Yeah. Yeah. So the way that we're prioritizing that, so the way that, um, you invest the money, you, you can't give us $100 in cash or $1,000 in cash, right? Um, you have to do it through a platform called wefunder.com. We'll share the link with everybody. This digital platform, the website, is regulated, regulated by the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, right? So your money is safe and regulated. Um, and so this website, anybody can go on the website and make an investment. We can't stop anybody. We're not going to stop anybody. Um, what we're prioritizing is marketing to the neighborhood, right? So that all of you hopefully are interested, right? And if you can't invest, you invest. If you can't invest, at least maybe you know somebody who might be interested. And so that's part of the way that we're prioritizing the investment opportunity being open to the neighborhood. And an investment just to make sure everybody can invest, right? To give yeah, yourself anybody, right. yeah. And uh, like I'll the business side, just making sure those that come in. Yeah, yeah. Let me. Right. So the this 
this thing is something like that's really exciting to us and like that anybody can invest. So this is to get a little nerdy on like why it's called regulation crowdfunding. It's basically a public offering of investments. Typically, real estate development, you can only do private mm -hmm. offerings. So private offerings means you have to be an accredited investor. To be an accredited investor means you have to make over $250,000 a year or have a million dollar worth of assets, like net, right? Not, not in debt. So obviously that leaves out of investment opportunities literally most of the population, right? So about eight, 10 years ago, this regulation crowdfunding started to get some legs and WeFunder was the first site that started doing it, but it was mainly for like businesses. Mm -hmm. So you would see a lot for like breweries or like gadgets, things like that. So the format is very similar to like GoFundMe, Kickstarter, that kind of thing. But the big difference is that this is an actual equity investment. Okay. So mm -hmm. that is like really exciting for real estate development because like even for us as acting as a developers in this situation, right? We can approach people that we have just met today, like today, and we're not asking for like, hey, you wanna give me $100 in cash, because that's not gonna happen, right? But you, we have this platform where you can think about it, you have our information, okay. and you can make the make the decision yourself. So that is something that we are also trying to prove out for real estate, so that future developers, be, can, you can ask the question, how come you're not doing a regulation crowdfunding campaign, right? Like, why are you not doing that, so, like the duo guys? So that's part of also what makes this really exciting and part of why also to make this work, we do need your support and we're asking for, you know, at least a uh, hundred is the minimum. Is there a cap on how many people or how many investors are going to be using or moving? That, that is, we're going to use that, the hundred thousand that we are hoping to raise. So that's a, that's a cap, is a hundred thousand dollars, but not, not a cap on the amount of investors. So I so guess if you get, let's say a, a thousand investors, Mm -hmm. Of a hundred dollars, yeah. You know, say what a thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. Would they be able? To, you said they they cap is only the double their money for the After first period of time. First fifty thousand dollars raised. Yeah. yeah. For those first fifty thousand, they would get to get it double. So right now That's we the, the 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 match. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. The first because we only have fifty thousand for matching. So of, of those hundred thousand, the fur of, of those hundred investors you said, the first fifty will get matched. The other fifty we can we can look for more funding to match it, but as of right now only the first fifty would get matched. Like hmm? Increase. That's their their ten percent would increase. Uh, that's a good example, right? So if they invest a thousand, then they technically have two thousand. So each year they wouldn't get a hundred. Each year they would get two hundred. And then, um, yeah, each yeah. So that's the exciting part of the match that you're basically guaranteeing your return and you're increasing your annual dividends. And that we always say like there's no such thing as free money. This is the closest thing to free money that we've ever seen. How many shares can one person purchase? Yeah. So each share is a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. That's a minimum investment. There is no limit on the amount of shares, but we are only fundraising a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So there is a limit, but if you want to, we've had the biggest investment so far has been $5,000 and the lowest has been $100. And 5000 is the limit for matching. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, you can do 10000 but we would only do like match you the five pieces. It sounds like you all are going to need the media to get the word out about what you're doing. So yes, make sure you consider <laughs> us to come in Thank and help you. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, yeah, we're really passionate about this because this is, um, I mean, to somebody who's outside of the real estate industry, you're like, okay, you're building a building, but because we're in it, to Carlos's point, this is a new way to build buildings, giving local residents actual ownership, financial stake on the project. There is a world where everybody talks about, we want community empowerment, community empowerment, and that is great. There are many ways to do that. This is one more way. It's not the better way, it's just one more way to empower the community for those residents who are able at the time to invest in a project like this, then you should be able to. It would be really, really cool if you owned a little bit of a few places in your neighborhood, right? Your favorite coffee shop, your favorite barber shop, your favorite, you know, hospital, dentist, like all these places, there is no reason, because now it's legal to do so, 
uh, that those developers can't open a campaign similar to this. And so we just want to show that it's possible, show that people are interested, show that people can invest, and that you're, you know, that you're, you're as passionate about it as we are. And once we do it, the building is built, then hopefully, again, we've been given real estate classes. Our dream is that then we can teach people in the neighborhood how we built this building so they can build a building of their own. And then if few people in the neighborhood are building buildings on their own, then you won't rely on one single developer to do everything. And so we want to distribute all of this power, wealth, opportunity, and all those things. And we need your help. So um, thank you. We'll be here for a while. There's a lot of food. There's pot in the, in the fridge. Uh, there's water. And uh, we will share flyers with you where you can go to these websites. But we will also hang out here. And if, everybody, if anybody is like, I'll just inv invest right now, what you do need to invest is a bank account. So it will in an email. So they will ask you for an email account, like many places, and then a bank account that you can link your investment from. So you will never give us money. You should never give people, you know, there should be some intermediate, okay? Um, so thank you for your time, and again, we'll be here with questions. And please be sure to sign up so we can follow up too on the sign-up sheet. We'll, we'll email you all updates and things like that. Oh, okay. Um, make sure you guys sign in on the sign-in sheet. Unfortunately, my printer is acting up, so I can't print out the flyers. I just okay. apologize. But make sure on the sign-in sheet you leave your email address. I will personally be emailing you guys the flyer that they're referring to, okay? Um, that way is for yourself, and then you will be able to share with your network. Mm -hmm. One reason that I have this networking event is because your network is your network. So you want to make sure that you connect with everyone if you get a chance. We're still here, even though they're done with their presentation, mm -hmm. feel free to ask them questions. They have pictures of the building on these signs over here, yes. and I'm pretty sure they can show you any other um, information. But also, just make sure you introduce yourself to the next person in the room, because you never mm -hmm. know who you can meet. That's right. Um, and I, I just always push that because that's like I'm a small business in the neighborhood. I was just telling them I've been here for about 12 years and just meeting different people. That's how we, you know, create genera generational wealth for yeah. our families. Yeah. Um, so I just encourage you guys to make sure you network, pass out your business cards and information. Uh, thanks so much for coming. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know as well as our uh, guest speakers.